Being able to wash your own clothes is a staple of adulthood. It's like that crossing of the guard where you are actually starting to become an adult. So now it is incumbent upon you to not smell like a fungal infection by <laughs> actually drying your clothes. And if you're like anybody on this planet, you have probably missed the dry cycle, I don't know how many times. So you would wash your clothes and then it'll be time to dry and three hours later, they'll be in the dryer because you literally fell asleep. So for those people here, there are some products that have just come out and I didn't even know they were a thing. I used to have the cheapest washer and dryer because I'm like, it's just water, bro. Like I, you just wash clothes. Like, but I decided to go with the GE Profile Combo Washer and Dryer and see if that guy makes it so that I don't miss a dry cycle. So here is my top five reasons the GE Profile Combo Washer and Dryer is for you and uh, maybe not. <laughs> Let's get into it. So full disclosure, before we actually get started, a lot of this is gonna be straight up off the cuff because there are a few things that I learned about recently, but there are some things I do wanna let you guys know about because I think that it will help. I don't know if anybody has actually made a video about the GE Profile Combo Washer and Dryer upstairs. So we will be talking about that here momentarily, but in my top five reasons on why you should get the LG Profile, we start with speed. And when we're talking about speed with the GE Profile, and you always get that question, like how long does it take? Well, if you look at it this way, if you have a normal washer and dryer, it takes 30 minutes to wash, right? It takes an hour to remember that you should be drying, and then it takes 45 minutes to dry it. So if you put that together, you have two hours and 15 minutes, which ironically is exactly how long it takes to actually wash and dry a particular load. Sometimes it can be about 90 minutes, but usually you're gonna hit around that two hour mark depending on how big the load is. And I have tried different loads, different size loads. I've even tried a full size California King Comforter. And that guy took about, I, I chose the bulky bedding option, which gave it about three hours. And I gave it an extra 90 minutes to do the more dry option because it came out, it was slightly damp, but it wasn't too bad. And so on average, it takes me about maybe an hour and 30 minutes to an hour and 45 minutes to two hours and 15, two hours and 30 minutes, somewhere in that range to wash a full load of clothes. But at the same time, you don't have to put the clothes in the dryer. And so nobody, like if it's upstairs and you are washing clothes and you live downstairs, you don't have to go upstairs to put it in the dryer. It does it automatically. That's the reason why I really wanted it because if I have like my sister staying or a friend staying or cousins or neighbors, uh, you know, and I live near Disney and, and they want to wash their clothes, they can wash their clothes and they don't have to worry about it. That's the real reason and the real benefit of having something like that because they don't have to come upstairs to just put it in the dryer. But it does, that convenience does come with a price and that price is speed. It is a little bit slower than you would see in a washer and dryer if you actually stop it when it's supposed to be stopping. It alerts you when you get up and you put it in the actual dryer. If you don't have that hour wait time, then, then yeah, it's slow. So next up is dryer functionality. Again, mixed feelings. I've ran into this situation uh, several times whenever I first started. I would dry it and then it would come out and it felt slightly damp. And so I would put it in the more dry and I would just do that thinking something was, was you know, that's just what it did because it didn't have a dryer vent. So, it, you know, it just uses electricity but that's not actually what's happening. As soon as it actually comes out, because it is a, a enclosed capsule, whenever it comes out, as soon as it touches uh, warm air, it kind of evaporates. And so all you have to do is shake it a little bit and everything is fine. Once I realized that, all my clothes were dry. I didn't know that that was a thing. Even though it says it in the manual, I didn't read that part apparently, because I didn't know it was a thing. I actually found out about it by watching other YouTubers. So. Uh, thanks for that, for, for anybody who uh, who told people about that. But once you shake it, it's actually okay. Uh, I, I would say that your clothes generally come out dry at about 10 to 15 seconds. So yes, they do get dry. I just I want to make that clear. It definitely does get dry. However, let's take it back to that California King comforter because I don't know if anybody's going to have anything as big as that. That guy, it washed like a breeze. I didn't have to do anything. I just put it in there and it was fine. It's just that when it came to drying with the bulky bedding setting, which means that it goes all the way in. It goes as, as, as dry as it possibly can. It came out and the top part was slightly dry. Even after shaking it, it was slightly dry so or slightly damp. 
And so even after shaking, it was slightly damp. So I had to put it back in there for the more dry, came out and it was fine. Once I put it back downstairs and put it over the bed, it was good to go. So that is something that should be noted. So if you do have like a California King bulky bedding, but if anything is less than that, then you don't have to worry about it. I would say just put it on the more dry feature if you're talking about a pretty big size load and you should be okay. Um, or you can try the standard dry and see how that goes. If it's a little damp, then put it on the more dry. Also, I would wanna say this, they were, I saw somebody mention socks. I don't have little people, like like uh, kids and stuff like that, dogs, things like that, that have little socks. Uh, everybody uh, in my family are giants. <laughs> and when I say little people, I'm just talking about like kids. Uh, I don't have kids or anything like that, or dogs or pets, I have bigger family members. And so we don't really have things that can get inside of the, um, the circular duct essentially is it's like a um, little tubing and it can get in there and then it gets completely drenched. I don't have that happen. So, so I've never experienced any kind of clothes getting in there and getting completely wet. So for me, all my clothes, including my socks, dry just fine. Okay, so we're done pretty much with the backhanded compliments. Now I'll explain the things that I actually do like. One, I do like not having to put clothes in a dryer and starting it. And also the space, oh my goodness, the space. The space that it gives me in that room, as you can see, I get a full uh, section that I can use for a refrigerator. Whereas I couldn't before if I were to have a dryer. Plus, I can't go stackable with that, I don't think. Uh, I may, there may be an option depending on, you know, if I decide to go with something else, but I've only had it for two months, so I'm still within the warranty as well as the return window. So I don't think I will be returning it. I like I like the product very, very much. I think it's a great, great, great product. Um, but, and, and what it gives you, it, that ease of use and that ease of space is so good, especially if you don't have a lot of room in your your linen closet, your linen room, where you actually have your washer dryer combo. So, so that's probably one of the big things that I would say they make up for the slower speed uh, when it comes to drying your clothes and washing your clothes because like most people take you know 30 to 45 minutes between the two but but this one starts off where they finish that's the start right so if that's the start then then you know it's not gonna be as fast as you think it would be but it does get your clothes clean and dry. Alrighty, another feature that I like about this guy is the auto dispense features. I think we're at, <laughs> it's top five channel, so I'm just making sure I hit five. I think we're at four, right? So speed, drying functionality, uh, as well as space. And then this one here is the auto dispense features. So it, the fabric softener and the detergent auto dispense features is amazing, oh my God. You save so much money. I'm still using the same liquid detergent I was using when I first bought it, right? And that's, you know, 50 loads later. It's still sipping on it and, and I'm still full. So it's like, it's, it uses very, very little fabric softener depending on how big the load is. It adjusts accordingly. So for fabric softener and liquid detergent, it saves you a ton of money. Like if you think about liquid detergent, right? Liquid detergent is so expensive. It's like the only thing that's more expensive than liquid detergent is like printer ink. Between those two, it's like $100 a bottle. <laughs> no, 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 it's not that bad, but it is very, very expensive and it saves you a ton of money. If you think over the couple of years or a few years or five years or 10 years that you have it, the amount of money you'll save on just detergent alone is ridiculous. So, because I've never known anyone to, to under put detergent in a, in a washer and dryer. They always overdo it, right? So the amount of money you save on that may actually make up for the cost of the machine. Even though the machine is, is basically the cost of two high-end washer and dryers put together. But, but yeah, it, it definitely makes up for it. So that is probably one of the cooler features. Also, another cool feature of the app is that it allows you to set timers. So for example, if you, know, you have kids and they're putting in clothes throughout the day, you can set it so that it will start up towards the night and actually do the wash cycle for you. So you know, if you wanted to set it at night, it'll start the wash cycle when you, you know your kids finally finish putting their stuff in and then it will finish and be ready come morning. So if you do wanna set timers for it to actually start, you can do that as well. If I can, okay, cool. So this year, <laughs> it's been a while since I've done this. So this is my GE profile. As you can see there, there is a few things that I do wanna talk about and that is putting it upstairs. So when you put it upstairs, there are a few things here and let me grab one of these aperture lights. So when you put it upstairs, um, ideally you wanna have one of these trays. When I bought the house, it came with this tray, but I didn't think that it would fit, so I bought this one, but I didn't have any of the tools to drill a hole. It's not the correct hole, like if we look there, 
that little hole that's right there. That's not correct. It's actually somewhere around here, but I didn't have anything to drill it. So, but it ended up fitting in this one. But there's a problem with this profile that you need to know about. If you're gonna put it upstairs, then you need to know about this. Okay, this is the pedestal. If we look here, it's actually a little hollow on the inside. So let me see here. So you see there, it's actually a little hollow. So uh, water can still drip into the pan, but that's not the thing. The problem is this guy. So this is the spout where you actually drain it in case there's any type of debris that ends up in the washing machine. And if you have it on the ground with this tray, this lip, it becomes a problem because the lip makes it so that you can't actually access this. And that's where you run into problems. All the problems that I was running into was literally because I couldn't access this. So I had to get Best Buy to come back out and put the pedestal on it. That way I have full access to this because if you put it in this guy, you won't have access. That's the first thing I wanted to talk about. A few things that were mentioned is that uh, you can't program anything. Like for example, you have to go with what you have. That's not necessarily true. What you can do, let's do this. Hot, low, and then go to towels. See, now that's a favorite. So now if you go to towels, you see, that's what it is. It's a favorite. So, okay, so you can set a favorite for it. That way it will remember exactly what you had. And then if you hold it down, it goes away and now it's back to normal. So you can set specific settings for whatever you want. So like for example, normal, normal's warm and medium. It doesn't have to be that way. You can make it heavy, hot. And I don't know why you would wanna do that, but you could. And then you just hold it down. And now every time that it comes on, it will come on with that profile. So it should be heavy hot, see? So now your default is now heavy hot. So, and if you wanna turn it off, you can just turn it off. So that was the first thing um, that I saw that people um, didn't mention, or maybe, well, I've had it for a while, I've had it for, well, I guess I've had it for two months, but I'm a baby in this too, so, but at the same time, I think this will help because I don't know if any of the videos actually had it upstairs, and that makes a very big difference. So, um, particularly with the tray, but also the cleaning thing. I clean this every day because I kind of learned my lesson because it warns you about it, but I try to keep it clean. And I noticed that a lot of people who had issues was because of this tray. Um, now, granted, I don't have kids or pets, so, <laughs> so um, mine doesn't get exactly all that dirty, but I do want to mention that the inside, they talked about this, so um, I've never actually looked inside here until I got ready to make this video. And let me see if I can do that so you guys can see. Uh, yeah. Actually, that is kind of a, there we go. So let me see if I can. Let's see if I can do that. There we go. Uh, let's see. I'm sorry, the camera. Actually, let's try this. There, that looks better. But it's, he it doesn't have anything to focus on, but there is dust and debris in there. Overall, not too bad after about 50 washes. I uh, ended up buying the Swiffer, because this is what I always use for dust. Like, I've never had a washing machine this expensive. So I wanted to see if this would work. And let's find out here. So I'm just gonna grab this guy. So see what I'm doing here. Okay, let's see if that actually works here. All right, and try to clean it with this guy and see if that does it. Um, well, <laughs> it tried. Let's see here. Get that little bit over here and then come over here and get this. Oh, maybe I didn't go back far, far enough. Oh, I see, I didn't go back far enough. Okay. Yeah, see, I use a Swiffer. Um, I just figured I should use a Swiffer. I don't know if that uh, helps anyone, but a 
Swiffer seems to work pretty well. It, it almost seems like the reason why it gets everywhere is because the filter is dirty. If the filter is dirty, then that those particles cannot go through it and they go around it because it can't actually get absorbed and get and hit the filter. That's what it sounds like, but I don't know. I don't have, you know, gigantic loads. The only, the biggest one I've had was my California King Comforter, but outside of that, my, my loads aren't gigantic. You know, it's a 15 gallon jug, I think, and I, I, I do like five to 10. So I never really maximized the capabilities of it. So that may have something to do with it, but I never really ran into that, but I've always cleaned the inside. But then I've never actually looked on the inside of the wash and dryer. I have always just, you know, cleaned the filter and called it a day. But but once you actually look on the inside, you can actually see that there's some, deb some debris there that you may want to take care of. So I got a Swiffer in order to go into there and get the debris and the Swiffer worked great. It took care of all the debris, but but the debris on the coils, it can't really mess with. So, so for that, you may have to buy the, um, the little add-on accessory that shouldn't be an add-on for this guy uh, so that you can actually clean the actual filters because they can get a little bit of dirty. Like mine was a little bit dirty, but it wasn't ridiculous. Like it didn't completely cover the coils um, because I have been trying to clean it. Now mine has only been two months. It hasn't been like six or a year or anything like that, but it doesn't seem like it gets super dirty. So, so, you know, my opinions are a little wavery when it comes to the cleaning because I didn't think it was all that bad. Just putting it in, you know, just clean the filter and all that. But now you clean the filter and you clean the inside and sometimes you clean the bottom spout, uh, you know, every, you know, 20 or 30 loads changes my opinion on it a little bit, which is why I'm a little bit more brazen on it, but still, for the ease of use that you gain from it, it more than weighs out the downsides of cleaning. But I did wanna make that well known. Alrighty, now, is it worth it? There is a few things that I do wanna talk about here. So if you live in the Americas and you have what's called a Best Buy, the Best Buy Total Protection, and what that is is, is a $100 a year thing that you can get uh, on Best Buy that basically allows you to uh, get tech support. Essentially, if there's any issues, you can call Best Buy instead of calling LG or Samsung or whatever. And that is also a really good deal because they also give you a two-year warranty for the smart, uh, what is it called? Geek Squad. <laughs> Geek Squad Total Protection. It gives you a two-year warranty on all appliances. So I went in knowing this. So I, I, I bought it with the Geek Squad Protection so I had a two-year warranty so in case something were to happen, I can contact them instead of contacting you know um, LG. Uh, is it LG? <laughs> My mind just went blank. So yes, instead of contacting them. So so I would say, you know, cause I saw other videos where they kind of bought it from Home Depot. I wouldn't do that um, unless you were actually getting the warranty from Home Depot. But if you can get a Best Buy near you or if you have a Best Buy near you or if you can get to a Best Buy near you, then I would say go with the Best Buy protection cause it's like $100 a year. And with that, you get an extra 60 days to return it in case you don't like it. On top of that, you also get the two year warranty off the jump. You can increase it to like three to five, but the two year was all I needed because that's enough for me to figure out whether or not I like the product or not. So I would say that if you are going to buy it and you are in the market and you're really looking at the GE profile, then I would, oh, I'm sorry, GE, I said LG. <laughs> the, if you are in the market for the GE profile, then I would say, make sure you get it from Best Buy, not a sponsor, not an ad, not none of that. I'm just saying do that because you get the two year warranty with Best Buy for free if you if you just get the Best Buy total protection. And so when, when you have that, you can essentially just buy all of your appliances from there and they all come with that two year warranty on top of the warranty that you also get from the manufacturer. So I do wanna put that in there. I would say this, the GE Profile is one of the best combo wash and dryers that I've ever seen. And it's the only one that's that's that good. Like I know there, there's another one that I haven't had a chance to test out but it is freaking amazing. However, if you have the space for a washer and dryer, bro, just get a washer and dryer. But if you are wanting to utilize that space for something else, then this guy's perfect. Uh, you know, cause, cause then you're willing to work with some of the compromises that it has when it comes to like the drying, the cleaning, stuff like that. There are compromises. However, the convenience factor and the space that it gives you makes up for it. And speed is speed. As long as you don't have to put it in the dryer, what do you care how long it takes? You know, is the way I look at it. You know, you're not putting it in the dryer, so it doesn't matter. So that's kind of the way I looked at it there. And so my honest opinion of it, I need to get a rating system. 
I would give the GE profile an A for automatic. I don't know, whatever A you want to use. I want to say awesome, but that belongs to somebody else. So we'll just say A. It's not an A minus, it's not a B plus, it's just a straight A. There are things that they can improve on. I hope what will end up happening is, a lot of people, you know, they've been trying to change out or fix the filter so that it won't miss and go around it. it, it I wish they come out with a different filter that you can just slide right in that they will give to some of the owners that already have the GE profile and they can prove it with their receipt. I think that would be a very, very good step in, you know, and increasing the people's scarcity or being afraid of the product. Because a lot of people is scarce in their thought and process in buying a new washer and dryer simply because what if something were to go wrong? You know, like like you hear all these things about the, the drying features and the fact that that lint gets everywhere, you know, and you, you're, you're afraid of it. But if you find out that, you know, hey, they came out with a new model, uh, lint uh, catcher, whatever you want to call it, that now catches lint a lot better and you don't have those problems. I think that that will take a long step in helping them get the product across to everyone. But overall, the product is great. I mean, I don't, I don't really have a whole lot negative to say about it. All my negative came in the positive backhanded compliments. But those are just things that you accept whenever you want space and you want the ability to not have to throw clothes in the dryer. Uh, you know, having to go upstairs to dry clothes is crazy. You know, so that's the way I look at it. I hope that helped a lot of people. And uh, I, I'm going to make more smart home videos. I know I had a request for, you know, uh, home devices and home security and stuff like that. Obviously, my get my background is security, but I'm not great at it because I just had a, I just got a house, so I've only had it for like two months. So so bear with me there. I will be making more content uh, catered around home devices, home security, anything that fits in the top five genre, which is basically going to be your smart tech. So without further ado, if you like this video, gonna like, but if you really like it, I'm gonna subscribe. I love you either way. Take care. All the best and bye. I will see you next time.